boys are wearing these warm-ups for tonight, for the game. Call the February 4th, 2020 meeting of the City Council to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, if you please call the roll. Will do. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderwoman Turner. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. Alderman Proctor. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMenamin. Here. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donlin. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Langfelder. Here. Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the January 21st, 2019 City Council meeting and approve the minutes. So move, Mayor. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of ordinances into the record of the city council meeting. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading in the consent agenda in the record of the city council meeting. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. <clears throat> Chair will entertain a motion to remove agenda number 2020-15 and 2020-016 from the consent agenda. So moved. And be withdrawn second. completely at the request of petitioners. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage with the exception of 2020-015 and 2020-016, so which have been withdrawn. <clears throat> been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the consent agenda passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Agenda number 2017-103, and 2020-045 remain tabled or in committee. Mayor? Yes, Alderman Hanauer. I make a motion we pull out uh, 2020-045 uh, for final, I don't know, what is it? To, debate. For debate. Second. Been moved and second to remove 2020-045 for debate. Any discussion? What does that pertain to? The, the CWLP. Yeah. Decommissioning? Yes. Yep. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to re... Oh, that's, we just did that. Next, uh, do I have to make a motion to remove it? It's already been removed. It's already been yep. done, so next. Next item on the agenda is 2020-028, an ordinance approving a professional services agreement with the University of Illinois Office of Recreation and Parks Resources in an amount not to exceed $90,434 to perform a recreational demand study for the Springfield Supplemental Water Supply Project for the Office of Public Utilities. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-028 on final passage. So move. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in a, a discussion? discussion. Alderman McMinimum. Um, Mayor, as I understand it, this is a um, 
ordinance that um, provides a study for the what we loosely call Lake 2, the second lake, as a supplemental water supply. This would be on top of the, I believe, four and a half years ago, the council approved roughly a million dollars for the environmental impacts study. And so apparently those funds were insufficient to accomplish the task. And so now we've, we've got this study and others m may have some ideas about this. But in the prior council, um, uh, during the last two or three months of Mayor Houston's administration, the then city council took a vote and we didn't um, approve a resolution for the second lake. And there's been back and forth going, you know, 30 years now uh, or more <coughs> on the need for this second lake. And so what this ordinance really brings back up is the whole question about the need for the second lake. And it's coincidental that on the same night that this request for additional funding comes to us, and by the way, I think this additional funding would then be followed up by some additional funding requests because why? Because this um, particular ordinance asks for a study on the need for uh, re additional recreation. Uh, but if we do establish the need for additional recreation, then the environmental impact statement also requires that then we have to, with a study, consider the alternative. So this is not the end of the, the money spending on this particular aspect of the demand. The primary demand is whether we need a supplemental water supply. And when that issue first arose 40 years ago, I mean, we really did think we had a, uh, a need for additional water usage because the then demand study showed a, um, a um, steady expected increase of water um, needs by our city. But actually what's happened then in the meanwhile is that we've had a, a flat increase in water need and in the last several years it's been declining and that's reflected in our water revenue that we were briefed on a week ago that our, our water revenue is down because our residents are using less water. What's um, also then getting back to the decommissioning of our uh, power plants, they use roughly 20% of the, of the water usage from our lake. So we're gonna have a, a lesser need for water. And so, of course, it's when we spend money, it's always you know this priority as opposed to another priority. And so, especially in our older neighborhoods, we have really significant priorities for um, the residential laterals, the, the sewer laterals going from the homes out to the, the main in the middle of the street. And we've talked about our, we've got 10,000 older homes with lead pipes. And so with a declining priority for supplemental water, it seems there's an increasing priority and, and demand for the older neighborhoods that, that need reinvestment in our infrastructure. Now, both of these projects can create lots of work for everybody, particularly for our laborers and operating engineers. But uh, I think the greater priority right now is our older neighborhoods. And that will, the, it, putting money into those lead um, pipes and into our laterals will create a lot of work for our laborers and our operating engineers. And the so, And the plumbers. So uh, I just wanted to, that's why I'll be voting no on this. Um, and I respect, you know, your commitment to the second supplemental water supply, Mayor. I, I, I uh, but I can't uh, support this one. I appreciate the insight. Any other discussion? One thing I would say is I know uh, the engineers call it supplemental water supply. I call it a backup water supply because uh, what happens to the city of Springfield? God forbid there's a drought. Uh, but if there is, that's the whole, you have to have a backup water source. You know, that's, uh, you know, we've even talked about it with the decommissioning. What's our backup plan? So that's why we're building out the grid. And how do you maintain that? But, uh, you know, I've said many times, I think everybody would believe this, the communities that grow in the future are the ones that can provide a quality, <clears throat> quantifiable resource of water. And that's uh, what this is. We don't have a backup water source. I'll ask Ted. Mecca's come up, but, um, you know, we were asked, uh, I think, 
over the last couple of years, probably a dozen times for Chatham, they wanted to use our water, even though they have their own source. And so, uh, you know, uh, that's what this is all about, is having a backup water source, um, you know, with regards to that, because right now we don't have a backup plan. So the two alternatives that we came down to, you know, went the same route, because the Army Corps wanted us to go through all the um, process, the permitting process, and we did that, came down to the same two, Havana Pipeline, which is 50 miles, versus Hunter Lake. And to go 50 miles, as a reminder, we just uh, went a quarter of a mile on 11th Street. It took us, I think, 30 years to go. So there's no way you're gonna be able to build a pipeline 50 miles from Havana. Uh, with all the right-of-ways, we don't have the jurisdiction and things of that <coughs> nature. Uh, what this does, it's a request by the Army Corps of Engineers to do the recreational analysis to prove the uh, added benefit of having recreational activities associated with Lake 2. But I'd ask uh, Ted to come forward, and then Alderwoman Conley, if you want to make comments now, or I just, I just real quick, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure Ted will have um, some good comments, but I did, I'd like to add on to um, what Alderman McMenamin stated. Um, my preference, obviously, we do want to make sure that we we protect the integrity of our water supply at Lake Springfield. Um, I'd, I'd like to see us making more investments into the the stabilization of, of our shorelines, protection of our water supply from from other properties, and being more proactive about dredging and, and maintaining the existing source that we have. So um, certainly I'd like to hear what Ted has to say, though. Mm -hmm. And you could speak to that, too. Um, Mary you said it correctly. Um, we have no backup to Lake Springfield. We can't go to Kern Garden or Chatham to supply us water. We, on average, use about 22 million gallons a day. They're using two to three million gallons a day. They can't help us. Um, we are, this is, the reason is severe drought. We, according to Illinois State Water Survey, we cannot uh, handle a drought of record. We would go dry. Um, so that's, that's not a good thing, especially as water division manager. We have to plan not for my generation, for the next three generations. If we continue to kick the can down the road, it's going to be three, four times expensive as now. This should have been done in the 70s. You know, this is, there is a need. There will always be a need. The mayor said it right. If you want to grow, if you want to continue to be a viable community, you need water. People will come if you have the adequate water supply. As far as the shoreline stabilization and things like that, Alderwoman, we are spending a lot of money on it. We do each year. Oh, we know. get EPA grants. Um, we have a plan to dredge, but first we must minimize what's coming into the lake. We just recently applied for an RCPP grant of a million dollars. And hopefully we get that, and that will help a lot in our watershed. Yeah. Okay. And Alderman McMenamin, as far as the, the shutdown of the units, that was calculated in our water demand. The years may be a little earlier than we anticipated, but that was also calculated in the water demand, and the need is still there. If I may. Alderman, Alderman Turner. Um, I fully support this ordinance, and I really, I, I feel kind of vindicated because I feel like the city is catching up. If you go back to a, uh, a, a questionnaire that I did when I, in my very first run for Alderman, and I was asked the question about uh, Lake 2, the money for it, I, I said then that yes, I was in support of it. However, I would, I would really like to see a recreational uh, component added to it because I think that it would make it much more amenable for our community. And as we uh, continued to market Springfield as a regional destination, I think that the addition of, of uh, the uh, Lake 2 as, as not only a backup <coughs> water supply but also as a recreational designation will, uh, will be a major uh, plus to our community. So I, I, uh, I'm feeling really good right now. Thanks for bringing this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Donlin, then McMenamin and Conlin. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mackis, just a question for clarification. You said that we can't continue to kick the can down the road. I, just, I don't know what you mean by that. How have we kicked well, the can? Well, we've been trying for this since the 70s. 
Right, but I mean, and isn't, isn't the problem that we can't get a decision from the Army Corps of Engineers? That, that, is, that is one of the many problems. And then there's for a while during uh, different administrations, we kind of backed off and let it sit. So we need to go at it and get a decision. Uh, that's what we want is a decision. Okay, just want a clarification. Okay, thank you, thank you. sorry. Yeah, Alderman McMinnman, then Alderman Conley. <coughs> I think that the facts are, is that the facts keep changing on our demand analysis, and we've had, you know, a quantity of studies over a number of years, and each demand study for water usage uh, shows a, a, a lesser water demand than the previous one, and uh, right now, I, I, the actual usage is flat. I just want to make a couple of comments. We're really talking about a tertiary uh, s supplemental supply. Why? Because the original creeks that feed uh, Lake Springfield were supplemented uh, in the 1950s by uh, the pumping station from the South Fork of the Sagamon River. And that secondary source of water has worked very well. Why? Because that watershed for the South Fork of the Sagamon River is four times the watershed of the creeks that fed the original uh, Lake Springfield. And that's why I've been so successful in avoiding the, the drought and the dry lake that existed um, before that supplemental water supply came into being. Now, as far as, you know, uh, let's, um, you know, the, as far as the argument that, you know, let's create extra water for Springfield um, and that might give us a competitive advantage over our neighbors, the Midwest of the United States is the epicenter of fresh water for the world. You know, if, if we want to pour Lake Springfield, let's say, into the Great Lakes, you know how many times you could pour Lake Springfield into the Great Lakes? Anyone want to guess? How about Hard almost... There. Yeah, almost a half a million times. That's how much water, fresh water supply there is in the Great Lakes. So let's go down to um, Lake of the Ozarks. Um, you could pour Lake Springfield into Lake of the Ozarks 500 times. And we've got all kinds of lakes around here, you know, whether Lake uh, San Crist or et cetera, et cetera, and that have recreational opportunities. So um, I don't think that the second lake will create additional recreational opportunities for our own population beyond what they already have and need. I think one out of every 25 individuals might have a boat, and I think um, the recreational needs within a 60-mile radius of Springfield are already out there. So just trying to add some additional reasons, Mr. Mayor. Alderwoman Conley. Thank you. And this is just clarification because I, I don't know this. Um, are we envisioning that the this, this second lake, the Hunter Lake, would also have residential properties surrounding it? Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah, we have so an agreement with be, IDNR to manage that land. So would that be a city-owned, like, wildlife refuge? Or what, what would that be? How would that be managed? I, IDNR would probably manage it as wildlife, yes. A lot of it would be riparian buffer to, you know, treat any uh, water flows that come into the lake. So Prairie grass. the state would manage our the property around our... We have a memorandum of understanding okay. with IDNR to do that, yes. Okay, thank you. I, I just wasn't aware of that. Yep. Thank you. Alderman Gregory. Um, yes, I, I'm just curious. What, what um, is our current lake, um, why is it not capable to do some of these uh, recreational activities on? It I is capable guess, for the but, recreation. Is there, the question is, is there more recreational demand than what our lake can provide? And if you go out on the lake on a hot summer day, it's bumper to bumper boats. They're, they're everywhere. We have a lot of fishing tournaments. A lot more want to come that we have to turn away. And the analysis is more than just our lake. Right. And the analysis is a 50-mile radius. What's in the 50-mile radius, and how far will people travel for this, these recreational opportunities? Okay. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Any other discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the ordinance, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. The ordinance passes seven voting yes, two voting no, and one voting present. Next item on the agenda is 2020-029, an ordinance authorizing execution of an annexation agreement between the City of Springfield, Illinois, and Martin J. Kakara for a property located at 3316 Lightfoot Drive. The chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the City Council for the purpose of holding a public hearing for consideration of this annexation agreement. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 
Oh, say nay. Motion carries. Public hearing is now open. Does anybody wish to address the city council regarding this annexation agreement? Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular meeting of the city second. council. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-029 on final passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the annexation passes. <clears throat> 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is 2020-043, an ordinance establishing a PACE area and establishing a PACE program to finance the acquisition and construction of energy projects. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-043 on final passage. So moved. Second. And moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is 020, I'm sorry, 2020-045, a resolution supporting the retirement of Dolman units 31 and 32, no later than December 31st, 2020. The retirement of Dolman unit 33, no later than February 28th, 2022, for the Office of Public Utilities. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-043 on final passage. So moved. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Alderman Hanauer. Mayor, I'd like to offer an amendment that uh, we change the date under Section 2, uh, where it says city, city Council recommends CWLP avoid spending $200 million over the next five years by closing 31 and 32, no, late, no later than December 31st, 2020, and Dolman no later than February 28, 2022. I'd like to strike February 28, 2022 and replace it with September 15, 2023. Second. September 15th. 2023. It's been moved and second to amend the ordinance to uh, strike February 28, 2022 and replace it with September 15, 2023. And second, any discussion? All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Motion carries. A roll call vote, please. <clears throat> roll call vote on the amendment. Alderman Redpath. Aye. Alderman Gregory. Aye. Alderwoman Turner. Aye. Alderman Fulgenzi. Aye. Alderman Proctor. Aye. Alderwoman DeCenso. Aye. Alderman Finneman. No. Alderwoman Connolly. Aye. Alderman Donnellan. Aye. Alderman Hanauer. Aye. Nine yeas, one nay. So any discussion on the uh, motion ordinance as amended? All those in favor of the motion as amended vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes, or resolution passes, 10 voting yes, none voting no. You might as well make it 11, Mayor. <laughs> might as That's well, true. Mayor. Oh, voting's closed. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. What a shame. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is 2020-046, an ordinance amending Chapter 33 of the 1988 City's Crypto Code Ordinances as amended. A housing policy council. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-046 on final pass. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, uh, Yes, Alderwoman DeCenso. Yes, I would like to make an amendment that one of your designees is from the Inner City Older Neighborhood Coalition. Second. I move and second to amend to allow one of the appointments to be from ICON, the yes. Inner City Older Neighborhoods uh, <coughs> Organization. And second, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Is there any uh, discussion on the ordinance as amended? All those in favor? Oh, sorry, Alderwoman Turner. No, I, I would just like to um, again state that I, I, with given what this um, advisory council is said to do, I would hope that the uh, nominees are very diverse 
with regard to um, residency and where, where they live, um, ethnicity, as well as income. And gender. Uh, did I leave that out? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yes, we'll work towards that, like all the missions. Alderman Redpath. And also like uh, someone from the business community, hopefully the realtor field or something to be a, a part of that committee. Thank They're you. already written into the ordinance. Okay, thank you. I think they have representatives if they want to come forward and speak to it. If you'd like to state your name and affiliation for the council, we'd appreciate it. Uh, Jim Clayton, Government Affairs Director for the Capillary Realtors and with the Illinois Realtors. Uh, just like I say, we're in complete support of uh, this council. I think it's be a great, great collaboration to address um, affordable housing. Um, I think we're in a unique uh, position with the realtors um, and the representations we'll have on there to go after some of the National Association grant money available to address affordable housing and low-income housing, as well as some of the state statutes that we're working on currently at the State House to address these issues. So we think it's a great idea, and we just wanted to come and show our full support of this council. So. Thank you. Alderman Redpath. So you've envisioned this, this council to uh, take on some of the absentee landlord situations that we have? Envisioned it to take on some of the absentee landlords? Yes. Um, to this council, I mean, we can address some of the problem properties and going through the Illinois compiled statutes. You can then, through a municipality that is home rule, address those properties by eminent domain or other avenues that you can go after some of those non-owner occupied properties. It's, it's a major issue for us and I don't know if that's the right committee or what it is. I don't know if that would be the right committee, but um, I agree that it is a major issue. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Mayor? Alderman Collins. Yeah, um, Alderman Redpath, that's that's the um, the other topic with the, the RAT ordinance that I'm working on. Um, and I've also actually sat down with the realtors to to start some language, but we'll bring something bigger bring soon. Bring a rat ordinance? Yes, sir. <laughs> An anti-rat Anti-rat, anti-rat. Um, please don't put me down as a pro-rat person. <laughs> Unless we're talking about snakes, and then they can have them. Any other discussion? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor of the ordinance as amended, <clears throat> vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. <laughs> And the ordinance, as yes. amended, passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is 2020-048, an ordinance authorizing an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with the Sangamon County, Illinois Board of Health for Animal Control Services for an amount not to exceed $249,068.47 from March 1st, 2019 through February 29th, 2020 for the Office of Budget and Management. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-048. 048 on final passage. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Is this for? Oh, no. oh, sorry. Yep. This is to pay for the few months. This is for the few months. Right. Okay. And does this include the overtime calls? No, that's the next one. Okay. Got it. Any other discussion? All, all the women Turner. So this is just an an extension. There's no changes. It's the same. It's an yep, this is just the base ordinance that we passed for the last several years. Okay. The next one is the one that has the changes. the changes, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes nine voting yes, one voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2020-049, ordinance authorizing an amendment to the Intergovernmental Cooperation Agreement with the Sangamon County Illinois Board of Health for Animal Control Services effective January 1st, 2020 through February 29th, 2020. That's, uh, that'd be 2021, right? No, this is just the final two months. This is the, mm. for the calls for service okay. that would be outside the normal. I thought that's what we just had. Something's messed up. Yeah, yeah. I think this, so. uh, this would be from uh, February. Glad I voted no. I think it's January 1st. Or actually be, uh, no. Wouldn't no. it be March? Well, the dates are correct. Oh, the dates correct? Yeah, the dates are correct. This is the same time period the rest of this year with the proposed changes in hours and the pickup fee 
and a couple of other things. Th this is adjusting this, this ordinance that's before you now. It's the amendment uh, to the intergovernmental agreement that addresses the call out, the additional cost related to call out services. But just for two months. Right, because the contract expires at the end of okay. February, so then we'll literally come with, uh, come with a follow up contract earlier in the year. It just so happens that these always seem to be trailing, but this is just for the end of the, our fiscal year. Okay. So when, so when are we going to come with the with the contract for March on? When is that coming? Well, in, in the past, it's, it's always been very much trailing. What we're going to try to do is try to bring it earlier. That would be from March 1st of this year till next year. I know that. I, so I guess my question, so that's part of my question. Why is it always so far behind? We know, we know March 1 comes every year at the same time. Director McCarty? The reason is because they compile all the, of the data, the call-outs, everything that, all of the activity that occurred this year will go to set the price for next year. So at the conclusion of our fiscal year, they will compile all of that data, and then that's when they will be able to set a price for next year. So Corporation Council is correct. It always trails. This year it trailed a lot because of our ongoing discussions. Normally we have it in late spring. That's what I, that's, yeah. that's what I was, my recollection, my recollection was that it was, the one that we just did comes much sooner than that. Your right. recollection is correct, Alder Woman. Okay, thank you. We do have individuals from uh, Sangamon County uh, Animal so, Control Services here. So I have Alder another question. Turner. Sorry. Um, so can you explain, so that I can understand what is in here, what, what this, the changes are? What the changes are. Sure. If you look, flip, I don't know if you have it in front of you, but if you go to the Amendment AA, you can see that there are some changes there. Uh, one of the key changes, and this is, stems from some of the negotiations that Tim and I had with the county, a key one that, depending on what you do tonight, we would like to see approved is the changing in the hours. It used to be that the, and I could get the times wrong, so Brian or Greg can correct me if I'm wrong, but it used to be that they only were actually out like from 8 to 5 or 8 to 5.30 or maybe 6. And we asked them to look at their call volume and to change those hours based on the staffing that they have. So now they're actually patrolling from 8 to 8. And if you look at the call volumes and the data that we have, and I can certainly share it, a lot of the after hours calls were occurring in that 6 to 7, 7 to 8 period. So by having them on duty, that now eliminates all of those after hour calls that were occurring at that particular point in time. So we now have greater coverage because the hours have been changed from eight to eight versus what they were before, okay. reducing that call out. So certainly there's that. Number two is what Alderwoman DeCenzo was referring to, and that is an additional, what they will do is they are proposing, and this is a proposal from the county to come out no matter what, if called by Springfield Police Department for humane calls after hours, but they will charge $75 per call to do that. So it becomes a no questions asked, no debate situation. If Springfield Police calls and says, we want you to come, they'll come, but they'll charge $75. The way it used to work, there used to be a discussion between, or as it works now, I suppose, there's a discussion between Springfield Police and Animal Control uh, through dispatch is what has been happening, although we've tried to take dispatch out of the middle so that there's a direct discussion. And then they together will determine whether or not they feel a humane call out is warranted. And so they didn't always come out, and this council has discussed a couple of situations that occurred last year that sort of prompted a lot of these long-term discussions that we've had where the county didn't come out. And so, so in this particular case, there's, their solution to that is we'll come out no matter what, but we want to charge $75 per call to do it. So if a... So if a police officer, so if there's a situation and the police officer calls animal control dispatch, they can tell the police officer, no, I'm not coming? It's my understanding right that now. has occurred in the past because they will discuss the situation, give the particulars, maybe it's a short hair or long hair dog, I don't really know particulars, but they will say, is there shelter, no shelter, is there hay, that kind of thing. They'll go through all of that, the scenario on the phone, as I understand it, and then animal control will determine whether or not they feel that it, there is a need to come out. 
Okay, so at the last, just a couple of days ago, I asked this specific question at the Board of Health meeting, and I was told that if, I was told that the, process, the procedure was that if there's a situation and the police call animal control, then they will send someone out. So now they're saying they will send someone out, but we have to pay them an extra $75. That's not. That's totally different than what I was told at the Board of Health meeting. The proposal in front of you is to come out, no questions asked, for $75, which so, is a departure from the way it has been done. Well, it seems to me, and I, I could be wrong. I, I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't do contract law. But it seems to me that if we have a contract that says... It's your responsibility that this is what you do, and it's your responsibility to perform this service because we have a contract. Then, for for all of a sudden now, animal control to say we're going to perform the service that's that we signed a contract to do, but only if you pay us an extra seventy-five dollars. To me, that sounds like a breach of contract. Again, I'm not a lawyer; don't even play one on TV. But it sounds to me like it's a breach of contract. On woman descends up. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I've spoken out about this ad nauseum, so I won't belabor the point, but we're currently paying a quarter of a million dollars for this contract. Um, if animal control doesn't want to come out, we do have humane coordinators that will come out. Uh, we held a meeting earlier in the year, and they are more than well, they're more than willing and happy to come out for free to pay an extra $75 is ludicrous. Um, and I'll also tell you what's ludicrous is that we're spending a quarter of a million dollars on animal control, but we don't spend that on home on the homeless population. So just a, you know, in your face kind of point there. And I am a definite no on spending $75 per, per call out. And I, I think, I'm sorry. Alderman Donna. I didn't raise my hand there. Oh, but thank okay. you. Alderman Turner. I, you know, I, I, I'm a definite no on this too. Be, for the reason I just said, that I think it's a breach of the contract. And I also think that in the in the next contract that we do, there has to be something written into that con into that contract that specifically speaks to non-performance. And, and I don't believe that that's in the contract now, but there has to be something that speaks to non-performance of duty. Counselor, do you know uh, the interpretation of the contract? Are they supposed to supply that service on call out or yeah. it? Um, I think that has been the presently we don't have a contract which is why it's here tonight or uh, going through this process uh, the contract that's the intergovernmental agreement uh, does not specify per se hours of service so it is my uh, it's my assumption that those are being set through the uh, public health you know, board, you know, through the through the agency itself, the hours of service. It was my understanding that the discussion that had taken place with OBM and with uh, uh, with uh, public health was to try to address outside their normal operating hours. And so the current proposed agreement or the current agreement that has been in place for some time does not specify hours of service. That's been left up really to the normal operating procedures of the agency. So the section you're talking about now is to actually amend and provide for, uh, uh, in effect, coverage for outside what their normal operating hours would be. Now, going forward in the next contract, some of this could be uh, specified perhaps in a, in, a, uh, in a more precise way. However, what's in front of you now is just an amendment to the current agreement, which is silent on operating hours. So the so the process I'm so why not? Okay, so so the process that the process that we've been going by, the call Springfield Police Department, Springfield Police Department calls animal control, that's just like a a gentleman's agreement. Well it would be a procedure or practice, yeah, administrative I mean, that's procedure or been, practice. It's yes. just been a gentleman's agreement that we do that. But by law, the Springfield police are supposed to take possession of pets. That is a new state law that came into effect as of January 1, but we are not equipped to do that. 
Alderman Henry. <coughs> so, so if the seventy-five dollars is for after hours only, and I mean, in the grand scheme of things, if we if we call it in, if we call one of these other places, and just just hypothetically, how long's it how long's it going to take for animal control to get out versus one of these other? groups because what we have at that point is we have a police officer that are, that's sitting there um, out of service and we don't have that many police officers on service as it is uh, you know do we make up that $75 if, if animal controls faster I don't I'm, I'm just throwing that hypothetically out I don't I understand we our contract is based on their their operating hours and I can appreciate that this I mean, to me, I don't care who comes out and, and takes care of it, but I, we need to have somebody reliable, and uh, we got to have, um, you know, to me, if it goes to another organization, is that going to be pretty convoluted for our police officers as well? Well, it went here instead of here, and this time it went here instead of... Sheriff yeah. Jack Campbell sat in this meeting, so he's on board with it with the other humane society, um, with other kennels and other humane um, certified providers. So this is, it, if we just amend this to cut out number two and number three, we'll be fine. And did they take the, where did they take the uh, animal once it's in control? We met with kennels that mm -hmm. said that they could hold the animals if they had to. Um, ideally, we'll make contact with the owner and they will bring, bring the animal inside. It's usually an, an extreme cold and extreme heat. And we haven't had that many cold days and we haven't had that many, you know, super hot, well, <coughs> recently. Mm -hmm. Alderman Repep and Alderman Respectfully, Tom. Alderman, Sheriff Campbell does not answer calls for service in the city of Springfield, though. He would be only going to calls outside the Correct. city. Correct. Uh, back to the... But, con but Woodside, con Woodside Township is a street over from... But it's still Woodside. out of the city. It's still not in the city of Springfield. That's what we were worrying about. Yeah. Uh, Corporation Council, uh, so wouldn't it be presumed that when we negotiate a contract for service, we're doing it within their hours that they, that they operate, Correct. Well, the current, I've looked at the current uh, intergovernmental agreement, I and I believe it contemplates that our, the agreement for services is uh, within their normal operating uh, is that it, Is that right now 830, I mean 8 to 530 currently? I'm honestly not certain what their hours are Okay, my uh, point their normal being, operation. My point being is that if we're paying them for their, during the regular hours, if they have to come out, it would make sense that we have to pay a additional fee only because when when uh, Ms. McBride uh, had a bad situation that we needed it, it's worth the money. But they don't come out. That's the point. Well, they don't come out because there was no agreement to that point. I think yes, there was. They have wanted... after hours. They have an after hours line. They have an after hours number. It's right there on their website. You want to talk about this? I think the uh, that's what the fee's for, so they are able to cover their overhead costs associated I, with calling people in. Alderman I, Alderman, I know how compassionate you are about this, and, I, and I, I, I agree with you to the point. I'm just trying to figure out if we're paying them for a certain amount of hours, and if it's additional hours, wouldn't it make sense that when somebody else has to have overtime, they get paid overtime? This is like an overtime fee, right? That's all I'm saying. If, okay. if that's written into the contract, I don't but, support and, that being and, written and into the contract. And this isn't the contract. This is to pay the bill for this year to the end of this year right now. The contract's going to be renegotiated here pretty soon, and maybe we can pound a few of those things out in that part of that contract to, to cover what we really want. But, 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 go ahead. Alderwoman Conley, and then Alderwoman Turner. Thank you. And I guess some of my confusion around this is that um, just the, pre, the plain reading of number two doesn't clarify that this is outside regular operating hours. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it sound as it, it says, the county will respond to calls for humane investigations in return for a payment of $75 from the city for each humane investigation performed by the county. To me, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, anytime we call them, it doesn't specify after 8 p.m. I mean, that modification would make a difference to me. Um, because then I think, Alderman Redpath, your, your point is well taken. Now we're talking about, about overtime hours. But that's not 
in this. And so I, I, I could read this as saying, anytime we have an investigation, we are gonna pay over the $250,000, another $75 per. And I think maybe some clarification around that is necessary. Mm -hmm. Brian McFadden, if you'd like to come forward. <laughs> Not really. I, you know, my thing is. Yeah, sorry, I'll no, that's turn okay. it. My thing is, if we have, I understand what you're saying, um, Alderman Redpath about the overtime. I, I truly understand that. But my my concern is if we if we have an agreement <clears throat> now that we have been operating under that if there's an issue you call Springfield Police Department, they come out and then they call animal control and then animal control comes out. If that's the agreement that we've had and the agreement For that twenty we, years that, and the agreement that we've been operating under then let's continue to operate under that agreement. And then if we want to look at doing something in the next contract period, then we can look at doing it when we talk about the, the, the next contract period. But I don't see any reason why we would just in the middle of an agreement, that a procedural agreement that we have been working under, all of a sudden make the change to start paying the the additional money. that That's right. my right. concern. Do you uh, like to clarify the process <laughs> sure. right now? Well, I'm not sure I can clarify. The, but, um, yeah. Yeah, the so um, all this goes, amendment, the amendment goes back to conversations we had right. <clears throat> back in the spring right. about, and at the time it was about the after hours humane calls. And for the life of the contract, which has been around 20 years or something, um, we have not charged the city for after hours humane calls. Uh, that date dates back to a policy, I think it predates all of us, that there was just concern that if, if we were charging for that, uh, communities may want to opt out of it and not want to have the humane calls. So the decision made by the county was that we'll go ahead and do the humane calls on our dime, which is what we've been doing for 20 years. We pay for it. You guys don't pay for it. What we've done along with that is that it's at our discretion. So if we're going to pay for the service and you're not paying for the service, we will go out when we think it's needed, and if we don't think it's needed, we won't. And often that's a conversation with, between Springfield Police or the Sheriff's Office or whoever it might be. When we spoke uh, back in the spring, the, the discussion was, well, what if you guys went every time? And so in my mind, that changed the basis of how this was being done. It was going from our discretion, and we're paying for it, to it's your discretion, you pay for it. So that's how the $75 charge came. And the intent is, Alderman Connolly, is for, really is for after hours, because we do have people on regular hours. Hours now, I, Greg Largen is here, uh, Director of Animal Control. Bill <coughs> Dart is the new Assistant Director of Public Health, in case there's questions I can't handle. But, but the intent was the after hour call. So we roll automatically, there's no questions asked. Alderman Turner, you're right, once we started these discussions and once winter came in, we decided on a good faith effort that we would go ahead and this hasn't been approved and I don't know if it'll be approved tonight or not. And if it's not approved, we'll go back to our discretion, our dime. But in the meantime, we were gonna go ahead and answer if, if Springfield Police wants us on scene for whatever the reason, we'll go ahead and do it as we try to work this out. And it's taken a long time. And frankly, a lot of that is my fault and the county's fault because we had some change in personnel and we had to kind of get up to speed on things. So the intent was to have Amendment 2 in place some time ago. So really, it goes to the end of February, which is a matter of two or three weeks. So it's, in some ways, it, it covers such a short period of time. Whether we do it or not, you know, we can talk about negotiating the new contract and what we want to have in there on that. But the, but the, the $75 is if you want us to go, you call it your discretion, then you pay for it. If it's our discretion, then, then the county will go ahead and pay for it. Gregory. So, Mr. McFadden, so is this like a after eight o'clock, everybody will go home? Does that does that employee? I mean, is this like a a, a, a dispatch that, that that we're calling into, and somebody will be at home with a with yeah. a dog catcher truck? And yeah, there's always someone on call for animal control, 24/7. They're usually at home, they'll get the call, but right. we, we're, and I want to make this clear, we're trying to be reasonable on this, and one of the things we talked about with Director McCarty was expanding the hours, try that first. We haven't done that because that was part of this agreement, but we're very open to that. We're now, I think we, we, we shut down at 6.30, take it out to 8, pick up a few more calls. There's no more expense to anybody because that's normal operating hours for us, that's covered under your contract, so there's no extra cost. So, so we're willing to try that as well. But. 
uh, some calls happen then, some calls happen at midnight, some ha calls happen at three in the morning. You know, in these after hour calls, that's the time frame that it would cover. And there is somebody in call. Uh, so there's really like three flash points here in this process. And we're trying to address each of them. The first one is the allegations that, that 911 does not contact uh, animal control or else animal control won't go, refuse to go out. Uh, dispatch has adopted a policy that if an officer wants to talk to uh, animal control, they're going to hook them up. There were some allegations in the past. The dispatcher would say, well, why are you bothering them to do that? You know, they're not going to come out, whatever that might be. I don't want to rehash that. But bottom line is they've adopted a policy. If, if an officer calls in, says, I need to talk to animal control, no more back and forth. And the effort is to kind of take them out of it. You hook them up so they can talk. So that's flashpoint number one, hooking up the officer and animal control. Number two is whether they go out or not. And as I said in the past, for the after hour calls, it's been a discussion you know, between the officer and sometimes the decision is animal control doesn't need to come out. Sometimes the decision is they do need to go out. So that's how it's been dictated in the past. But again, it's been ultimately animal control's discretion whether they go or not, so we're paying for it. So that's the second flash point. The third flash point, and I'm not sure how we address that, is the fact that once they're on scene, whether an animal is impounded or not. And often that can be a joint decision between animal control, law enforcement, the Humane Society, whoever else might be on scene that has the ability to impound an animal. The, the, the process you talked about, we're in full support of this after hour program that I know some groups have talked about. And if they want to go that way, perfectly fine with us. But what the attempt of this amendment is, was really based upon the conversation the mayor and I had, said, hey, you guys go, no questions asked. We want you out there. Stray dog. Uh, it's a dangerous dog, we go anyway, because we're mandated to do that. But a stray dog or a humane call or a cruelty to an animal call, we go. No no back and forth, what, what's the weather like, what's the situation, we're, we're going out there. So that's where the $75 charge came from. And again, if you don't want to approve that tonight, I understand that, and we'll go back to the policy before. And it does, you're absolutely right, the, the, the IGA references language, it says that the county will enforce the city's animal control ordinance. And that does cover humane calls. And again, we go on those at our discretion and at our dime. Alderman Donnelly. Thank you, Mayor. I just uh, I was wondering, I don't really know who to address this to, but it might be Bill. How much, I mean, we're only talking about a two month period. How much, uh, have we estimated what that $75 charge would be? Like how many calls? Uh, what so <coughs> I analyzed the data that I got from the county and looked at it, taking into account the extended hours up to 8 o'clock, and came up with, based on the, I guess it was last year's data, I'm not sure exactly the time period well, covered, 20, yeah. maybe count, was that 2019? Right? 2018, I believe. 2018. It looked like it was going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $9,000 on an annual basis. Annually, okay. And my, I guess the second part of the question is to... Older woman Conley's point is if the intent is to for this to, for the seventy five dollar fee to be charged only for after hours calls, could, couldn't we amend? Would you be in favor of everybody be in favor of making that amendment accordingly? If that's the intent. Yeah, the intent was to address the after hour right, calls. After hours. It, right. No humane calls are being paid for. Period. Now you can make the argument. Regular operating hours, we have an officer on, we have several officers on duty. They can go answer the call. Is that an additional cost? But after hours, it definitely triggers overtime. It triggers getting somebody out of bed, getting somebody on scene. So there's definitely a cost to that. And again, I just want to keep making this point, the county has been covering that cost for the last 20 years at our discretion, at our decision whether to go out. Again, if you want to make it mandatory that we go out, then we feel it's appropriate that that ought to be paid for. Alderman Rip, uh, Brian. So if if we don't pass the $75 tonight, will you guys still go to the 8 to 8, the hours 8 to 8, or is that part of the whole package? If, if, if the amendment doesn't pass tonight, what I would propose is that we just set back, because we do have to do, do the new agreement starting in March 1. And we there usually is a lag, Alderman Turner, because it takes a while to compile the data because you're, you're paying for the previous year's activity is how it's billed, is that we start negotiations at that point. And we've talked about this, that the next agreement ought to have some changes anyway. We've talked about quarterly billings, so there's not this backlog that develops. Uh, humane calls can be part of that. Staffing can be part of that. Uh, we've talked about some, some language to, to disclose the training that's being done by animal control. So I think there's a number of things that can be discussed at the, in the discussions for the next intergovernmental agreement. 
but the way this uh, the way this relationship works, I believe it should work, and it hasn't worked this way in the past. Frankly, be the first to admit it's been very loose, and this intergovernment agreement has not changed for quite a while. But the, the way it works is, you contract with us for a service. If you don't like the service you're getting from us, contract with somebody else. I understand that completely, or talk to us and explain what we're not doing that you're not happy with. Vice versa. You know, you can't just change the code to put some requirement in there that we have to do something without the understanding that, that there's going to be a cost to that and we should, this should be paid for that. So part of what we talked about when the new IGA is a better working relationship between the city and the council. So if you guys are looking at some additional services you want to have happen after our calls, mandatory after our calls, we talk about it and we figure out how to address that. That's and we are given the chance to say, can't do that. Maybe we can do it for free. We, you know, we talked about adjusting the hours. That's something more than willing to do, no cost to that. So the amendment reads, you're switching the hours from 530 to 8 and the $75 fee. That's all one, one amendment, is that they're, right? They're, I think they're both in the same okay. amendment. I think it's 8 to 8. So the, my next question is, the, do you have any kind of figures on what the overtime has cost you in the previous year? I mean, after hours stuff, you pull it out. That's obviously an overtime cost for you, correct? Correct. So yeah. do you have it's any time and a half. So do you have any idea how many hours that takes in or how much that costs? Well, if you're talking in the aggregate, it just depends on the activity. If you're talking about the individual call, the $75 approximate what it costs. I got that to get part. I'm out. talking about in general for the whole year. What's it, what's it cost you above the contract that, that we, we have? Oh, again, it would depend on the normal activity. We can get you a number that would average out. No, but I, I, I think, didn't know if you had. I, 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 I think the number's higher than 9,000. To be honest with you, I think the number's higher than 9,000. I didn't know if you had that at the top of your head. but uh, I so, don't. so when they come out to the call, um, you said it takes uh, the cooperation between the animal control, police, and, and the Humane Society. So who has the authority to, to impound the dog? Is that all three of them have to do that? or, or? No. I, my understanding, and Greg explained for me, all three have the power to impound the animal. So That's not cool. all three are on the same on scene at the same time. Sometimes it's just animal control. Okay. Often it's animal control and law enforcement. Sometimes it's, it could be law enforcement and Humane Society, and we've not been called. Um, so all three, I believe, have the ability to impound. And if all three are on site, I think they try to reach a consensus, which sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't, on what ought to be done moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Alderwoman Conley and then Alderwoman Turner. Thank you. Um, and thank you very much for coming tonight and, and answering these questions. Sure. Um, again, you've got kind of, as a newbie, I'm asking probably more questions than, than um, we have in the past. I, I just kind of need to understand a little bit. The base funding for animal control, where does that come from? Uh, you I mean, mean you say this is on the county's dime. What what funds animal control? So animal control's budget, on average, is about a million dollars a year. The f the largest revenue source to fund animal control is the rabies tags that are purchased, which I think is around six hundred thousand a year. So and that those is are a the, the rabies tags that we we pay for with our dogs. Yeah, everybody pays for in the county, and the okay. county has the, the the responsibility of enforcing any sort of rabies issues, rabies outbreaks. So right. that's revenue that comes to the county, regardless of whether we're contracting with you guys or Pawnee or Chatham or whoever it might be. Um, the next probably largest source is probably the city contract, which has been going down, I believe, the last couple of years, but it's around two hundred fifty thousand, two hundred sixty thousand. Uh, I think we get about a hundred thousand in. Uh, fines and fees, people come in for to pick up their animal, whatever yeah, it might be, the there. first impoundment. Yeah, those kind of fi fines and fees are 120, 130,000. That's normally the major revenue sources. There's other, some minor things that come in. The, the, the other villages, uh, I think their contribution is maybe 15,000, some of that, that neck of the woods. So, but when you say, you know, the county is picking up this bill for us in after hours, I mean, I buy either one or three year rabies tags for both of my dogs. <laughs> so my payments as a city resident are going into fund animal control in that regard, correct? correct. But then also <coughs> as a city resident, I'm going to have to pay extra because I'm not in the county to have someone come and take care of a dog in distress if it's after 8 p.m. Only if you mandate that we go. <clears throat> right. No questions but, but, asked. But I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say, you, you're saying county, we versus city, but I live in the city of Springfield and I live in Sangamon County. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know I pay a lot. Of, I pay taxes to everybody. We all do. Um, and, and I'm not complaining about the service. I, I, I'm just saying it's not as if city residents aren't also paying as part of this service. I mean, it's sure. not... 
the, we don't get a break on our rabies fees, do we, in the city no. as opposed to county? So, I mean, and I appreciate what you're saying, and I understand that's your budget that you need to keep, you know, and, and you have a very vested interest in keeping that managed, but as a as a representative of the city, I have a vested interest in making sure that that my residents aren't aren't also paying extra just because we're in the city. Well, I agree with that completely. Other than our perception is you're asking for an extra service that nobody else is asking for. Well, I mean, a mandatory we have call of, out. There are more people in the, within the city limits, and um, I mean. I don't yeah, know that it's an extra service. It's so much as we're asking that the, the the agreement that we have in place that animals need humane pickups at certain times sure. be. I'm not saying we don't honored. ever haven't ever gone in the past. We do go out if we feel it's wanted, but we don't. It's our discretion because we're paying for it. And right, but but I mean, when you say we, I just want to. I just I kind of want to get past these divisions. I'm a county person too. Sure because I live in Sangamon County. So um, I, I, I just want to make that clear. I, I, I think I have kind of a little bit of, um, well, I want you to understand where I'm coming from with my concerns with this. Yeah, so to kind of help with that, maybe I don't know. So there's 98% of the services generated by the city and unincorporated Sangamon County. And the city, I think, is 60 or 80, I'm sorry. About 85% of our activity. How much of that percentage of your budget comes from city residents? Uh, less than 85%. I don't know the exact number, but it's... The, 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 well, the animal control habitually has been, uh, I'll put it this way, the revenue doesn't cover the cost. Okay. Habitually. So it's made up by other funds within the public health department, including the property tax revenue that's paid for by everybody in the county, including the city yeah. of Springfield. So, so that money has traditionally gone in to subsidize the animal control service. For better or worse, that's how it's been set up. So and where would that money go if, if we're not subsidizing animal control? Is, are, there, I mean, are there other, are there other initiatives public health that you would be able to offer yeah, to Yeah, other public residents? health programs. Okay. WIC, uh, different services that are provided by the, by the public health department. Okay. But Thank the, you. The, and this has been a longstanding situation, and this policy of not having uh, the city or the villages pay for the humane calls is a very longstanding policy. More than willing to look at anything, We're guys. Paying additional because we are paying already additional. paying as county residents. And, well, so is the village of Chatham. So is every village. Right. And they're in the city. They're in the Sangamon County as well. Uh -huh. But they're paying for a service provided within their village. You guys are paying for a service provided within this, the city of Springfield. The county is theoretically paying for the area in the unincorporated parts of, of Sangamon County. Thank you. All the way I don't know turn. if I answered your question. Paul, Thank you. Um, I guess I would echo all of my colleagues' remarks. I, I really appreciate you coming tonight and, and sharing all of this information because, quite honestly, this is the first time that I've heard all of this at one place at one time and can get a clear picture of everything that, that's happening because it seems like the only time that we ever hear about animal control issues is when there is an issue. Mm -hmm. And then we, then we hear this is what we're doing to address that issue, which is why... I was under the impression that the agreement that had been worked out with regard to um, the, the police calling animal control and then animal control com coming out, I was under the impression that that was a hard, fast, this is the way that we're handling things going forward. So I appreciate your clear, clearer explanation. Alderman Hanauer, then Alderman Ripath. Yeah, um, and then you. And I I think that what I'm hearing and what, from kind of both of, of, of Aaron with you and but yeah we're we're county residents but I think what if we were if we follow what you guys do through the rest of the county which is at your discretion whether you come out on a call then it does then we don't have to do this but what I've heard in this chamber before and it's when we do have an issue and they've they're for one reason or another, they've elected not to come out. I don't know why. I don't, you know, and there's been a few of those. And and um, so I guess what 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 we got to decide here is, okay, do we do let the we, we can be like the county residents, or do we want a better service than what the rest of the county's getting? And if we do, we're going to have to pay for it. That's am I is am I right. kind of phrasing that correctly? But well, and, and I'll tell you why, because if 
I think there was an issue with a with a dog last winter, I believe. Yes, mm -hmm. and was. you you were very irate and yes, and, and should have been. Mm -hmm. In that case, seventy five dollars would have they would have been on scene they right away. They were aware of the situation and they chose not to come out. There was a call log between the Springfield Police Department and Sangamon County. <laughs> yes, there was. But in this case, and they, didn't they would come have out. to. And show there are people, up. lots of people that can speak to it. I believe Jane McBride was on the scene of that. Of that incident, so. But that's just my. That's the way I see. I, I don't. And that understand. was a humane situation. So here we are hearing that they come out in every humane situation. I didn't say that, Alderman. I did not say we'd go you, out. You we did. have in the last couple months. I look. I don't want to rehash this. I, I know people are emotional about it. We're trying to chart a path forward that gets this covered. And one I path didn't mean is to bring you, that up. No, I'm no, just that's fine. One path is you, you pay us logic. to mandatorily yeah, go logic. out. It's Another path is the other program is that the Humane Society or some of the other groups can go out. There's many paths to go forward. This is just one of them. And again, if you don't want to pursue this path, that's fine. We'll go back to how the policy was before. But Alderman Redpath and Fulgenzi. Yeah, uh, just, oh. I just want to clarify oh, I something. You took your turn. I just want to oh. clarify something. This whole agreement with animal control came about because the city of Springfield decided to do away with our animal control. It's the same and thing. Move. Well, it, it, it is what it is. Look, if you guys think you can do this service for 250,000 kids a year, you can't do it you're, you're more than welcome to try so, it. So anyway, long story short is we did this because we did away with animal control. We also did the same thing with our health department. We used to have a health department in Springfield, did away with it. We also did it with our recreation department. We turned it over to the park district. We did that for consolidation to try to save money because if we do the math, and we all know this, we do the math, I don't know that we can do it for what we're paying out. Now, am I happy with exactly how the contract's going down? No, but we got to talk about that and, at a negotiating table and figure out what we're going to do. That's, but, but I'm not directing this at you. I'm just looking at you. Uh, I'm just saying that there's a reason that we went into this contract and that we did that back about 20 years ago when I was a young pup on the city council. You were I, never a young pup on city council. Uh -oh. Really? <laughs> I think Alderman Redpath admitted that it is his fault that it went over there. It, blame it on me. I don't care. I've been wrong. No. Well, so, all I'm just teasing. Kidding, all, Actually, all Alderman. kidding aside, Mayor, I mean, I was here. I sat back where body sat when we did that, and I was very happy with the deal we negotiated back then. Not so happy with it now. But it was meant to try to, try to achieve efficiencies by doing it. And we went out, and we got every village every city in the county on board, and the feeling was it's more efficient to do it that way. We want to make it work. Right. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Mistakes happen. Things happen. We can communicate better. That's one of the things we talked about. You know, the fact is, one of the things we want to try to talk about with, with Director McCarty is having uniform fines and fees. The city has a much more aggressive fee structure than the county does for impoundment. They ought to be the same, you know, for just for continuity purposes. Sure. So there's lots of, it's just been a little lax last you know, 10, 15 years, and it's time to, to maybe tighten some things up here. But well, again, yep. you know, the, the, the way this, this relationship works is better communication. And if you, there's a service you guys think we ought to be providing and we're not doing now and you're not paying for it, there's a decision to be made. We can say, sorry, we can't do that. Go to somebody else. Or we can accommodate you. Just communication. Desenso, then Fulgenzi, and then Conley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Thought I was out of here. No. <laughs> I, don't know. Name, I would like to point out that this has gotten more debate than this, this shutting down a power plant this in the lake. Actually, um, that was last week. <laughs> <laughs> was, I'm sorry. We are not in compliance with the state law. Our police department has to be able to handle, as of January 1st, we have to be able to handle animals. Mm -hmm. So we do have a kennel. <coughs> and if we have to take in an animal overnight to make sure they're safe, then we have to make sure our police are equipped to do that. This is the option we're offering right here. Or if well, you want no, to no, do no. that. No, no, yeah. it's, it's a state mandate. We don't have this. It's not a no, no, no. This is our, just, that's not, well, it's I not think our that's decision. that's debatable. The chief's not here, so. Uh, no, the chief is he, aware of it. No, he's not here to debate it or oh. discuss it. So I think the, it's real clear the options tonight are either we do the $75 and, uh, you know, have the county provide it or do the pilot where you call in uh, all the advocacy groups to do it for the two month period or month or two weeks, whatever we have left. Well, I think the pilot's or, being done. It, it is being done. And, and I do agree with Alderman DeCenzo, she's absolutely correct. I mean, yep. law enforcement has the ability to impound animals. Mm -hmm. Do they have a place to put them? I don't know, but maybe they do, maybe they don't. That's, that's the issue for law enforcement. We built a very expensive kennel. We should have a place to put them overnight. You're talking about our kennel? No, oh. we did, the city did. 
Alderman, for tra training purposes. Alderman Fulgenzi. I don't know if I want to bring this up now or not. No. But, just, <laughs> but I, I seem to recall at the time we had this discussion where there was an animal in distress that the police officer didn't call the county. No, he did. Several, no, he Jane did not. was there. Yes, he did. He called several times. There's a log of it. They called all night long. Yeah, you shouldn't have brought this. You shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> Someone that was there I, that I, night I, 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 tell I, I, you I, that saying this. I remember the uh, police chief saying they had a discussion and he, he said decided they not to call. There, there's, there's a very strong disagreement on what happened that yes. evening. And I think we right. just look at moving forward. Right. Moving yeah. forward. Please. Alderman Conley. I have a different question for you okay. now, since you're still here. Thank you. Um, and I, I, I'm sure you've heard, of, I had an issue that I brought up last week yeah. with a service dog that was taken in. Um, and I'm just, uh, obviously it's not included in this, this language. I would just ask that you consider maybe, uh, Bill, if you could, I'm sorry, I know Bill from Public Health Days, other public health, but if, if we could maybe just have some sort of um, an understanding that we can share with the community on what happens if you have a service animal, um, and, and what, are the, what are the steps and procedures for getting that animal out after hours to make sure, because if, if you're saying there, there is an after hour contact and the whatnot, I'd like to make sure that we have a guarantee that people can get those animals out without a delay, including legal holidays. Absolutely, we need to look into how we would get a hold of the information to understand that that is a dog that somebody relies on for a service or some type of uh, support. And if, if we can get that knowledge you know, in the hands of our officers, then we can do something with it. But right now, I don't see a path that we would have that in, in all cases. Well, would, would just someone saying, I have a certification letter? I mean, because you have certification letters. These are, they have, you know, would something like that be sufficient to say, I need you to meet me out there at animal control at 5.30 p.m. on a Sunday to get my dog out? I think that, uh, that that would work, yes, exactly. If they have the available documentation to prove that that is a service or some type of certified support dog. Uh, in some cases, of course, we pick up animals that aren't marked and we don't know who the owner is. Right, and if they we don't have that information. their leash, yeah. yeah. Or, or, and I mean, my dogs use the harnesses. We keep the rabies tags at home and I'm just now realizing we need to stop doing that. Um, Absolutely. But if, I think if, if they were to get out and you find out this is where my dog is because they're also chipped, is there a 24-hour line that someone could call and say, my service dog um, was on, you know, off-leash in the backyard, someone left my gate open, you picked them up, I need to come get them now? Uh, we'd have to work on what that channel would look like as far as the communications, but certainly the officers are available, they have access to the facility, so I think there is a path there. Okay, and I, I'd appreciate, and I'm just saying, I'm just putting this out there because obviously it was an issue of concern for a constituent, and I'd, I'd like to see that that route is offered. This is my last one that I'm going to shut up. Um, we, I will. <laughs> well, for, on this issue, um, someone did just suggest from the audience that uh, the $75 is paid by the person whose animal is picked up. So that might be something to look at going forward in the next contract. Yes, that's a good idea. I think that's I like sure. that idea. <clears throat> thank, um, thank you, anonymous <laughs> citizen in the audience. Um, so, if I, so, well, I'm not done. I'm not finished. You said you were. I know. I said this is my last time. Out loud. So I think we'd be open to that, but history tells us that's a I lot said. of our fines and fees that are I said, applied people it. don't pay. They that's would, what I said. That's why they don't we care up, about their yeah, dogs. They're they not going to pay it. Um, second, I just want to address the fact, Mayor, that you have to uh, you have to appoint someone new to the Sangamon County Public uh, Board of Public Health because I've been kicked off before I even got to attend a meeting. So you guys all voted for me. I appreciate your votes. Um, the Democrat, I guess. I guess I was too too lippy, but I've already been dismissed from the board. So Mayor, you need long. to. <laughs> Appoint someone else. If that was the case, told. we wouldn't have any aldermen on the board if I needed to. So, 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 so we're, we're reconsidering that. So it's, it, 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 wouldn't be the, it looks like I changed my position. <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope it's been explained how the no, arrangement it's never works. Been explained, well, I'll be glad actually. to talk to you after the meeting but, or give you a call. But. Alderman Donnelly? I don't know if we're done making comments, but if we are, I would like to make a, uh, an amendment to Section 2 of double A, of exhibit double A, 
to include the to make it cl clear that we the seventy five dollar charge is for after hours calls only. Second, eight p.m. hours. Boone, second second to amend. Uh, correct. Double A. Second is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. to uh, seventy five dollars after hours. After eight to clarify p.m. That. per the per section. So let me one. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Let me interject a little bit of reality here. So we've got how many weeks left in February? Three. Weeks, yeah. We need two weeks to talk to the union about changing our schedule. Mm -hmm. I don't anticipate that being an easy discussion. So we can't implement the new hours until after that period. Should we just wait on this? And yes. I, I, I have no problem with it. This is not a money grab, guys. This is just trying to put something in place. Beginning? Why don't we, we don't just hold it? Yeah. 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 Let's hold it in committee. Sometimes we all work towards a decision, and, <laughs> and that's what we've done here Are tonight. Okay but with the Senate back to committee? Yeah, I just, if you approve just this, this will go through the end of February. We get lippy, you know. So. Yeah, I don't need that. That's, don't this will go through the end of February. So uh, practically, and we've, we've, been, we've been operating as if this has been in place without charging you guys. So, um, so I, I have no problem continuing to do that. But I do think we need, as we look at the next IGA, address some of these issues. Maybe we get, you know, I don't even, I dare I'm even bring it up. Maybe we get through this winter without <laughs> right. some yeah. crisis situations, which we've been fortunate to avoid for the most part. If, if I can, down. For, first of all, thank you for coming. You didn't have to do that. I appreciate it. It, it did help, I think, and facilitate a lot of good discussion, a lot of good questions. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to send this ordinance back to committee. Second. Second. Second, Third. Second to uh, send the ordinance Done back to committee. Ago. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Right. Next item on the agenda is 2020-050, an ordinance authorizing the sale of surplus real property commonly known as 2840 and 2860 Adlai Stevenson Drive in the amount of $315,000. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2020-048 on final passage. So moved. Second. Good moving. Second. Any discussion? Um, Mayor. Yeah, I think we're agreement. headed in the right direction on this. I, um, as I understand, this is where the motel once existed. Uh, no, there's no back it's there. The Stevenson behind. Drive, yep. Stevenson it, Drive Hotel right now. It's, it's the building the still standing behind Wilkerson's. Okay, so it's still there. It's going to be taken down. Yeah, it's not the it's not the vacant lot next to Wilkerson's. It's not the Days Inn. It's the Stevenson Inn. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, and, uh, and that's the property that's been behind on their lease agreement with yes. the city. And Thank when you. this came to the council back in uh, December, I think we passed it on uh, December 17, and it was um, a jointly sponsored ordinance. Back then we had uh, several property addresses besides the ones that we're considering tonight. We also had the 3000 Adlai Stevenson Drive and um, 2830. Um, so what's happening to those uh, pieces of property? So have we sold the entire stretch or have we just sold a portion of it is the question? <coughs> These are uh, this uh, a little a little bit of background uh, the properties here this evening uh, are the um, Wilkerson property which is right on Stevenson then the property directly behind which is a uh, was called the Stevenson Inn. It has no frontage on uh, Stevenson Drive. The city uh, also owns what uh, has been referred to, I think, as the Days Inn property, which is the property where the demolition occurred. And then there's the property directly um, east, or directly west, rather, of Wilkerson's, which is a, a restaurant property. All of those are owned by the city. Uh, and there is currently some interest uh, by a uh, private entity for the Days Inn property. However, that has not been uh, uh, finalized in any measure, but ultimately the goal would be to sell that for redevelopment and then uh, potentially look at, and again, this is recommendation through the uh, utility of also selling uh, the property where the restaurant is, but again, it would be a private developer buying it. And so those were the four pieces of which two of them are referenced here and uh, the Wilkerson uh, discussion has been going on for quite some time but it got uh, some interplay because of the uh, default of the Stevenson Inn owner with the bank and the bank's unwillingness to discuss it with the city. So all of that has been uh, resolved to allow those two pieces to go forward. There is a written contract uh, offer 
and the other two pieces, uh, hopefully at some point, will be coming forward. Mm -hmm. And again, subject to council review approval, you know, in a normal fashion. So did we know that Mr. Wilkerson want, wished to buy this property yes. back in December? Yes. Mm -hmm. And is that why um, back in December the ordinance stated that we were waiving certain provisions of the city code regarding sale of surplus property? Yeah, in other words, we were not seeking RFPs but individual contract proposals. And normally what happens is, like if you recall with like the lots, for example, the vacant lots or uh, and, uh, pieces of equipment sometimes that we sell, we do RFPs. These commercial properties are not, uh, we have a better chance of getting a better price if we market them and have some opportunity to uh, negotiate with potential buyers or development issues, not just simply do a flat end RFP where you might get uh, very low offers. So I'm, you know, I, Mr. Wilkerson's a great uh, commercial me. resident of, of Springfield with multiple locations, and he does an outstanding job. But I, I think when I asked the question back in December about why we are waiving the um, provisions of our city code regarding the sale of surplus property, the answer I got was because we wanted to really broadcast and advertise the availability of these properties beyond even what is normally the case, but in this case, what you're telling me is that we already had a buyer for one of these properties. He, he has made numerous offers which have been uh, for this particular piece, not for the days in or the other, but uh, has made numerous offers, uh, kind of, I would say, informal offers, you know, by way of letters and so on, but we actually have received a uh, contract proposal uh, for that and the, and the uh, piece on the back and part of that is that he would be agreeable to basically taking care of the uh, remediation and cleaning up of the Stevenson Inn property. So purely a business uh, discussion in relation to those two pieces, but the others are, will uh, basically be presented or available for uh, sale, hopefully to other uh, developers or investors. Well, I'm not going to second guess the procedures we've gone through here. Oftentimes when you have a, an entire stretch of property for development, sometimes that gets an even better price instead of piecemeal it. And I just hope, you know, that our obligation is to sell property um, with the best price we can get on the market. And I just hope that, you know, that's what we're achieving here. Yeah, I think that's the case here because it's uh, almost landlocked. It's behind Wilkerson's. He made, uh, you know, that's the business that had the uh, greatest interest. <clears throat> he did come up in price, uh, and as the Corporation Council said, the remediation of the area, uh, you know, the, uh, the facility is uh, dilapidating, it's uh, vacated, and um, it's just not a good situation. So uh, and from that standpoint, it's a real win-win uh, because it gives him the opportunity to expand his current business and take care of a, a problem property. Alderwoman Turner. Um, I, I, this is a, um, this is an area that is extremely blighted and becomes more blighted by the minute, and which feeds into the fact that it is a main entryway into the city, and because of what is happening on one end of Stevenson Drive, it has bled over to the entire uh, stretch of Stevenson Drive, and this is a real opportunity, I believe, not only for a business. Uh, a business person, but also for the city. We've been kind of dealing with this stretch of property for probably three or four years, where we've been, you know, talking about what to do about it, what to do about it. And um, I'm glad that we find, we're finally there. With regard to the two properties that are on um, the agenda for tonight, there's really nothing anyone could do with that property other than the Wilkerson's because if, if you're familiar if anyone's familiar with it it's directly behind his business so I'm not sure who would want to purchase that landlocked piece of land directly behind someone's building where there's no frontage and also to uh, do the remediation and, and tear it down that's a significant cost that the city is not going to have to bear and be done with it uh, I'm also excited that the other uh, properties that have been, that the city did demolish, are to a point where we can't offer them for sale because um, we have been, we had 
several individuals that were interested in uh, building on that property, but we could never get it to the point where we could uh, be in a position to offer it for sale in a timely manner. And I think that we really lost a couple of really good opportunities because of that. So what we have now is, um, you know, we get rid of some blight on Stevenson Drive. We get a, a building demolished at someone else's cost. We get uh, we turn over a property that now will be taxable. That's money that's going on, on the tax rolls and an opportunity for a business on a main thoroughfare to, uh, to ext ex extend their business and, and their, thereby bringing in more, uh, I'm sure, sales tax money as well. But we also have the opportunity to market that other property. And so, you know, we're looking at a business could you know come to town and 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 go there, which would mean some more uh, opportunity for uh, property tax and sales tax that the city would bring in. So uh, I think that this is a significant a significant win for the city of Springfield, and one that has been probably three to four years in the making. So I would um, ask that everyone support it. Any other discussion? All in favor. Vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. The ordinance passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Is there any unfinished business coming before the city council? Other woman, Desenzo? It's old business, and um, Director Bottom, I've been in contact with you the last few days about this, but <clears throat> waste management is not picking up stickered bags of yard waste. Everyone is very clear that they have to have stickers on their bags. Um, I had a constituent go round and round and round and round with waste management about not picking up her stickered bag, her stickered bags. Um, they've sat out there for weeks, and then there were a, a whole thread opened up about waste management not picking up stickered bags. They are responsible for picking them up within those five days, so we will go ahead and address them and cite them. They need to be cited. These waste haulers get off scot-free by not, I don't know if this is, you know, punishment to us for not, you know, for our, our stickerless program. I don't, I don't know what the problem is, but when people go out in the cold and put the stickers on their bags and actually do yard waste in the middle of winter and then their bags sit there and rot because their, their waste hauler refuses to come pick up their bags, it's, it's ridiculous. Oh, Woman Conley. Thank you. I, I actually was going to um, bring up a similar topic, um, and Director, I, I just need to clarify with you. And I, I think we'd emailed, and I don't always get to check my responses, but um, I have a couple of situations where houses have bags out. Um, from what I can tell, they aren't stickered, but I. Thought that the waste companies, if the bags were out for a certain amount of time, were supposed to pick them up and then bill the customer. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay, that's not happening in Ward Eight. Or I mean, Ward Two. I, mean, well, I think we'd probably just go around the room and say it's not happening. So, yeah. um, it, it is a significant concern. I, I've some of these. Some unfortunately, this year I think the oak leaves held on until January first. Like everyone was waiting for January one, mm -hmm. and then they all dropped because I mean I know we did a little more yard work, but I have a lot of streets with bags piled up, and um, if we could please just get that message across that they need to follow through on that part of their deal, deal too. We'll do, and we also have our RFP out there right now for year-long pickup moving forward. Wonderful. All the way to Hanar. Nate, what, what, can you clarify the procedure? They put bags out with stickers. Do they have to notify their yard waste hauler that that they have bags out, or they just is it like normal where they just drive by? Yeah, they should contact their waste hauler. Um, they only have a limited amount of vehicles this time, but uh, and let us know if they've been sitting out there for a while, and we'll also reach out to them. But they can't see that there's. Stickered yard waste out in front of, I mean. Well, you can contact us and let us know, and we'll make sure it gets taken care of at this time. But that's the point. It shouldn't fall on you. Yeah, it's, uh, we'll have to work on the process. I think it, they probably bring out a special truck because you don't mix the garbage with the leaves, so I think that's probably the issue. Or maybe we'll work Still with uh, Republic, it. ask them to do one last sweep through the city. Maybe they'd be willing to do that. 
Alderman Donnelly? Yeah, I hate to belabor the point, but I, my, you know, if, if Alderman Hanauer would have asked me that question, I would have said, no, the ordinance says that if, it, if the bag is out and it's stickered, it has to be picked up, period. But are you suggesting that they, the residents take the initiative to also call their waste hauler? It's not required, is it? It is not required. Okay, I just um, wanted to be sure. I'm just trying to help them be a little proactive. Thank you. you are correct. Okay. All the women, Turner? Not a waste hauler question. <laughs> you know how I feel about waste haulers, but. <laughs> um, so has, have the additions been finalized for the um, Ward 3 exterior rehabilitation program that would include the garages and driveways? Please uh, say I yes. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't Why? think so yet. Why? <laughs> I'll have to get with Val on that. Well, we're, wait we're waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we'll have to, uh, Val's coming up. But uh, Nate, if you want to give, uh, stay up there and uh, talk about the weather, if oh, you would. Talk about the weather. <laughs> yeah, but Val can come up. We haven't had a chance to sit down and go over it. And I, I'm just going to remind you, we decided not to do garages because they were detached, remember? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, been, it's been so long. I, 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 I know, I know, I, I know. No. So sidewalks. It'll be, by, it'll be by the spring, <laughs> right? Sidewalks. But we did say sidewalks and and driveways. And driveways. Yes. And, yes. We, and we yes. were just actually working on, okay, now what are we going to run into? Is it... Is it, a, is it a sidewalk that goes around the back of the house? Is it a sidewalk that just is in the front of the house because it's all for front facing, street facing? You know, that's what it's supposed to be mm -hmm. about. So the mayor and I had talked about it briefly, but yeah. We'll get to it. It's on my list. I, I have so a meeting with him saying, tomorrow. So, so, so are we now saying that we're considering not adding that? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no. Just just okay. trying to think through all okay. the things, you know. Parameters. Okay. The, Thank yes. You. It's, and, it's been so long, I didn't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I want to remind you about the detached. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah. that's that's my fault. I, <laughs> okay. Long time. It, I'm older. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Oh, man, Gregory. I know. <laughs> uh, Nate, um, since we was, you know, on our lovely trash haulers, um, so, you know, the leaves is, is definitely, you know, whatever. The, our our, our um, sister Alder woman have, have done their, their thing on that. But I am curious on these large items. If I report that as a citizen and say, hey, Mr. Bottom, I have, there's, there's, a whole living room set outside on the sidewalk in front of this house. How long do I have to, how long would I expect to wait before that's gone? Like, how, what is the process for that? Is it like when the, when the waste haulers come down, if they see it, are they supposed to report it or? They are, and we have a solid waste crew that will come and pick it up. It right. depends if it on, can't the, be on the work load. And, stuff. and then also we have Habitat for Humanity that offers the large item pickup. Right. But if it's if it's something bad or been been out there, and I mean some of the stuff is like I I wouldn't I wouldn't let my you know a dog lay on it. Yeah. You know is is really like. Yeah, contact our office okay. and, and we'll go I, and ahead and investigate just, it and then know. we'll either cite them and then we'll have our solid waste crew pick it up. All right. All right. Thank you, bro. Thanks. Yeah, you want to address the weather? Maybe anticipate well, the weather? Hopefully it's that, a little less snow than uh, we were anticipating initially. Uh, it was predicting four to eight inches of snow. They have reduced it down to one to three inches, but um, we're monitoring it very closely. We did send our uh, night crew home in anticipation of at least a half inch of snow uh, tonight. And then the majority of the snow looks like is coming tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon into Thursday. So we may need to declare a snow emergency. We're not sure we're gonna track it and, and then we'll make the call more than likely tomorrow morning if it looks like we're going to get a, a substantial amount of snow. What's the latest for tomorrow evening? One to three inches so was the, three. the latest. They were predicting four to eight inches earlier in the day. However, I just checked it before I came up here. Thank you, Nate. You're welcome. Doesn't any other pretty. questions for Nate? That's 24 hours. <laughs> Is there any uh, new business come before the city council? Uh, just a reminder, this uh, Friday, the chamber dinner is happening, occurring, and then this Sunday's NAACP uh, annual event, both at the Crown Plaza, I believe. And then um, we did get a, uh, I guess, a goodie bag from uh, Troop 
6195, it says, beautify your world, keep the sunshine bright, and the dirty air away this Valentine's Day. Thank you. So we appreciate that. And then we appreciate the Boy Scout from uh, Troop 3 uh, for being here. And then Simona White from uh, American Cancer Society for thank you card, thanking all the council members for what they do for the American Cancer Society. Is there any other new business? Anybody wish to address the council? Val Yazel, would you state your name and address for the council? We'd appreciate it. Seriously, I'm, no, I'm, I'm as your economic <laughs> development director up here. I just wanted to let you know that late this afternoon, we got an alert that Macy's was closing 125 stores, will be closing 125 stores over the next three years. So I reached out immediately to Clay Emmerich, and he guaranteed that we are not on at least this round of, of closings, but they are. It's mostly in the uh, northeast and northwest and east. So just wanted to let you know that yep. if you hear that coming up. So we're okay. So shop local and, and our mall. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the council? If you come forward and state your name, we'd appreciate it. Jane McBride, 3300 Foresight. I wanted to talk about animal control. Um, I would sincerely hope you do not rush into this next contract. There are many issues with regard to animal control. This was only one of them you heard tonight. Um, animal control, when that contract was established, did promise the city that they would handle the humane calls. They didn't ask for any additional money. This has been going on forever. Um, it is part of their responsibility per the Animal Control Act and the Humane Care Act to respond to these calls. So um, the fact they need more money, maybe they need more money. Maybe they should have been back here a long time ago to talk to you about their expenses and their accounting and everything else that goes on with the county with animal control. But it, it is something that needs to be looked at very closely um, as to exactly what you're getting for your money. I'm not saying that they don't need more money, but I think you need to analyze why they need more money and how they're spending it. Currently, that animal control shelter is a disaster. It's been under a RFP uh, effort for four to five years to replace the kennels. It's an embarrassment. There are open wires. There are all sorts of troubles with that kennel. And um, uh, th it's still not done. I mean, that money's been approved for, for, for two, three years, and they can't seem to get it done. And you shouldn't, I mean, you, you should not be paying for that. That's part of what you're paying for. Um, they're not budgeting for vet med uh, services. They don't have the equipment they need. The nonprofits are coming forward in a um, private part, a public partnership just to address the immediate issue. They only budget $500,000 a year, uh, not 550000 I'm sorry, $50,000 a year uh, for veterinary services. My little humane group blows through $50,000 a year for humane groups, and quite often we're picking up city animals, to be honest with you, that they're not getting the care there. We have tried to establish something with them with three humane groups now that provide that care, um, but you really need to know what they're doing and what they're not doing. Um, it is not a satisfactory service for your money at all, and I think I think you, you really need to analyze that contract. Training is something we talked to them about. Field services has been a problem. We're out there doing this for free, and um, it's coming at a price for us. We shouldn't have to accommodate for them. Uh, for what they're not doing, that they're supposed to be doing pursuant to the law. They made that deal. McFadden made that deal 20 years ago. The fact he hasn't done anything about it is on them. And the fact that they're contributing some tax dollars to it, that's what they're supposed to do. That's what a public service is. These animal services are going to increase as your population increases, as your society considers what they want done to the animals is, is ever more. They want the care for the animals. That's why they come to us to get that care. So I ask you not to rush that contract through. That's their own problem if they can't get it done on time. They should have been here a year ago when we made it, when we brought this to their attention that that contract was uh, insufficient and unsatisfactory. So please do not rush that through. I've asked a number of you to speak um, independent, individually, and I would like to meet with you about this, and I can go through it item by item as to what's going on over there. Their euthanasia rate is way up this year for no reason. They're killing animals because they don't have the veterinary care for it. They're not bringing in proper assessment on behavior. Um, APL offered to take 
a number of cats off their hands. They did not follow through with that, so they put down animals for no reason whatsoever. It's, it's, it's not being supervised properly, operated properly, or handled properly. We are working with them, we are bringing these issues to their attention, but honestly, the city needs to exercise oversight on that contract. I appreciate your time. Jane. Thank you. If you could just stay up there for another minute. I want to clear, clear this up once and for all. You were on the scene last year. Okay, I was on the phone, all right? I was on the phone. You were on the phone. Our investigator was on the scene. Um, I talked to the police a number of times. We, we did get, um, I had a personal conversation with the police chief. I know exactly what happened. They did call animal control. They did, animal, um, the police did call animal control a couple times. Animal control did not come out. There was a miss, shouldn't have been, but they, their interpretation of the law was not correct at the time. And then, um, so uh, that, that is a problem with their field services. It is, we've been in that situation with them. And my, my other investigator was here tonight as well. She's been doing this for eight, 10 years. Um, but yes, there was, and they've never admitted it. And it's, it's in black and white, it's in the emails and uh, your chief of police admits it as well. But you know, again, yes, we had that problem. We're trying to move forward. We're trying to work with them. We're trying to, you know, work through this. Um, but but there is an issue. There is definitely an issue. And uh, we've been on them. We're trying to do this issue by issue, so we can identify, do an action plan, hold them accountable, and see what happens, and go back and go back and go back. We are putting a ton of time into this. A ton of time. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Fajenzi. I, I was willing to let this drop. But I, I guess I won't know. Mm -hmm. Frank, or clerk, would you please read the minutes from that particular call? Yes, we'll get them for you, Paul. Thank you. And we had that last year. Uh, the chief had actually followed up with the call logs from, yes. remember? Right. Yes. He did. So he did. He had them. He did. Uh, the chief was up here and stated before the council the police officer did not demand that they come out. No, what the question was, was because he can't demand a, them to come out. All he can do He's is the call them. He's the only one that can. No. No, that's uh, not true. It's, uh, it's the way they were functioning, okay? It, it, and it's true, there was a way in which dispatch was functioning with the police. And, and once animal control told dispatch early in the evening that they weren't coming out, and this was the reason for it, then that, that's how, that was their procedure. So dispatch would, would not put them back in touch. So the police, in their wisdom, knowing how this had been going on, the officers actually went back and kept visiting the site, thank God, and stirring up those animals and keeping them alive. The officers have learned how to um, uh, accommodate animal control when animal control wouldn't respond. So they know they, they, pardon me, at Go that ahead. time, Pardon me? At that time, it was a, a discretion. It would have to be a, uh, an agreement between the police officer and animal control, and there was no agreement. Well, okay, no. That's it, not true. It truly was a matter of dispatch is, uh, you know, function with animal control. And I, I sat with Jim Stone, and he told me exactly what he, how he was instructing dispatch as to what they would respond to or not. And, and dispatch knew they wouldn't respond to these humane calls once, once they got an interpretation like that. So dispatch was not, they weren't putting them back through. And there was that night, they put them back that went through. out before. They put them back through a couple times. And, and again, they were told the same thing. But it was so cold that night that there was a d directive that went out to animal control employees saying, it's too cold, we're not going out. It was 45 below zero. Yeah, it was, yeah. I don't know about that. Well, Those are the facts. We'll get the chief up here and the call logs. Thank you. Right. Anybody else wish to address the council? If I'm wrong, council? I'll apologize. Would you like to come forward, state your name and address for the council? We'd appreciate it. My name's John Raven. I live over at 3201 South uh, Douglas Avenue. Um, once again, I'm back in front of you guys with, with uh, another problem. Uh, Alderwoman Conley brought it up to the pound, uh, the animal control. That was my dog she was talking about. Um, Jax is a 
three-year-old German Shepherd. Uh, I suffer from severe PTSD, ang uh, anxiety, anger, and uh, some depression. My psychiatrist had prescribed that dog to me a few years ago, or a couple years ago. And um, he, what happened was he, he was outside, he was playing, he was in his harness, uh, on, his, on his lead. Never gotten off that ever before. I went, I went to check on him. His harness was broken. He was gone. I drove around for about two hours trying to find that dog. I get a phone call. Uh, first, I got a phone call from Avid, which is the people, one of the chip companies. And they said, my dog had been found. He's, he's at the pound. He's OK. Then uh, I got a call from the pound. And they said, we have your dog, and uh, he's okay. They found him over on Wabash and Jerome. Well, where I live is right there, in, on the right by Jerome. Uh, I think it's still kind of part of it. And um, I said, okay. I said, I'll, I'll come by and get him. No, we're closed. And I go, but you guys don't understand. It's an ESA dog. I cannot be without my dog. That dog cannot be without me. In short little stents, yes, but not for long periods of time. They go, well, we're closed now. We're closed Sunday. Monday's Martin Luther King, so we're closed then. So you can come by and pick them up on Tuesday. But first, you got to go over to the village of Jerome. You got to pay them for them calling us. And then you're going to have to pay all your fines to Jerome. And then once you have the receipts for that, you come over here, prove to us you paid everything. And then you got to pay the fines here, uh, his boarding, and your dog is registered, so you have to pay that too. Well, I argued about well, one, I argued about the registration because, I mean, I, I've had dogs my whole life. I grew up with dogs, cats in the house, and you know, every time uh, you take your dog in for its yearly shots, you pay part part of that payment is to register your dog. Well, they said he wasn't registered. So I also asked him how much it's going to cost, cost to keep him there, and they said $21 a day. And then somebody in the background yelled out, no, it's more than that. We changed it. So how much is it? We don't know. So now I'm even mad. You know, first, I'm, I'm mad about my dog missing. Two, I'm mad that you tell me I can't even get my dog. Three, you don't care that it's my emotional support dog. And four, you don't even know what this is going to cost me. Well, I went from Saturday all the way through Tuesday. I bet you I maybe slept four hours the whole time. I was a complete, complete basket case. Um, I mean, with, without my, without Jacks around, I, 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 I don't even know how to explain what it's like for me. But I, it's not good, and. Um, the other thing, when I got to the pound, it was the same for Jax. Jax was pissed off. He was he was not wanting anybody near him. Um, and now, after listening to that one lady just speak, it scared me even more, being he's a German Shepherd. And he was acting out. And I'm, I guess I'm pretty lucky they didn't decide to kill him. Um, and uh, I finally got my dog back. It cost me well over $200 to do it. And uh, find, find, come to find out, after they, uh, one of the things after they got done yelling at me about not having my dog registered, guess what? He was registered. And they still wanted me to, <laughs> they still wanted me to pay for that registration. Um, as for that $75 they were talking about, all, they're, all, all that's going to end up happening, and I, I don't know, I don't care what uh, police department it is, I really don't, because they're all going to do the same thing, they're going to pass it on to us. So that extra $75, I guarantee you, if it was Jerome and it was after hours, that $65 just got tacked on. Well, they got to make their markup, too. It's a business. So they're going to mark it up, add that on to the normal $65. And now it, it's going to probably cost you $120, $130 just to make them happy for calling the pound. So I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not real impressed with anything that animal control does. I think it's a scam. I don't think they treat the dogs fairly. I went, when I went to pick up my dog, I was not impressed. I, I, 
you know, I felt bad for my dog. I really, I mean, not just the fact of where he was at, but the conditions in there. Um, the fact that they have no idea what to do when it comes to a service dog or an ESA dog or any a dog of that kind. I mean, I you know it, it was bad enough for me, but I mean, my God, take a look at some of these guys that, or I shouldn't say guys, some of these some of these other people out there that have very severe problems that have to have that dog. I, I, I had a friend of mine whose wife has one because of epilepsy. And that dog saves her when it comes to her epilepsy. Well, what happens if it would have been her dog? They wouldn't have, the pound wouldn't have cared. She had to wait four days to get it back. You know, tough luck, basically, is their attitude. And I want to thank you, because you seem uh, uh, very... <laughs> passionate. Passionate, thank you, about uh, dogs and animals, stuff like that. And I think not that's... Not over-emotional, though. It's not no, we won't go over emotional. Passionate, we'll stick with. Very passionate. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, you know, the humane society, or, you know, the humane society or no-kill shelters and stuff like that, I think is a great idea. I mean, if, if same county is worried about my, my money, my money, my money, and your money, and your money, and your money, well, you know, I'm worried more about their money and don't give them use. Somebody else will do a better job and care more about the people and the animals than they do. Because all they care about is the money. And that's pretty much my point on that one. Um, and if you guys want a, want a little bit of an update about the rat house, no? no? Okay. Little <laughs> Conley's all over. Yes. <laughs> so, I'll see you tomorrow at the hearing. <laughs> 10 o'clock, right? Yep. Cool. So besides that, I'm, I'm, I'm done with my little soapbox for the day. Well, thank you. Thank you appreciate well, it. You're welcome, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say... Um, Thank you for bringing yeah, this up. Um, thank you, Mayor. I, I, I've mentioned this before. My my mom is a physical therapist. She's trained service dogs. Um, it's there's a lot of training, a lot of expense, and and value added to these animals. They're not just right. they're not just pets. They're working animals, and and I um, certainly hope and expect that we will have something in our next contract with Animal Control that addresses when our citizens have need of an animal. I mean, they're still dogs. They can get out and they, this happens. Uh, that's not, the, a service dog being at the, at the pound is not something that should be taken lightly and needs to be um, an established protocol. So, mm -hmm. Makes sense. thank you. Anybody else wish to address the council? Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to name, we're adjourned, thank you.